Well, the first AI cinema camera is here. It's pretty weird and pretty awesome. We're gonna dive into everything that we know about it today. So I don't know, let's get started. So yeah, the first AI cinema camera now exists. Uh, this is the CMR M1 or Camera One. And this is, at least to my knowledge, the first camera that directly integrates Gen AI technology into the video capture process without having to you know, offload your footage and run it through a computer or like a random Discord server. And admittedly, if you think it looks a little ugly, I mean, you're not necessarily wrong, but there is a reason for that. Its design is actually inspired by the Cine Kodak 16 millimeter film camera, which was the first widely available and produced 16 millimeter film camera. So it's a bit of a historical nod there. That said, I've always got love for like big bulky retro stuff. So, I mean, this one is actually right up my alley. We're gonna get into tech specs in just a minute, but I do wanna make clear that this is more of an experimental prototype. It's not, you know, available for commercial purchase. So this is not a, you know, like rabbit R1 type situation. So, you know, Marquise Brownlee can sleep soundly tonight knowing that he does not need to kill another company. So the camera was created in a collaboration between Special Guest X, which is a creative technology agency for the world's most innovative companies, and First Avenue Machines. These were also the folks that put together the first AI video editing station. I'll talk more about that one later because it's pretty wacky. And as a totally random side note, First Avenue Machines was also the company behind the brilliant OK Go music video for Writings on the Wall, which is a one -er that featured a bunch of like perspective illusions. If you've never seen that video before, it is linked down below. Highly recommended. It is just a ton of fun to watch. Back to the camera model one. It utilizes a FLIR sensor or forward looking infrared sensor. It's kind of that thermal look that, to be honest, I truthfully always associate with the Predator. <laughs> to be honest, I'm actually not sure why they use this particular sensor. Uh, the footage, which we will take a look at in just a minute, does not come in looking like, you know, a Predator is hunting you. So yeah, the camera does record kind of normal looking video and then stylizes it via a video to video process utilizing stable diffusion. It comes loaded with five lures. If you're not familiar with lures, they're basically stylization looks. And the camera one has uh, looks including blooming nature and cosmic coma. These look like they're accessed via a menu system that's on the back, but here's what's kind of cool. You can load your own lures in. And here's another one that's kind of a weird design choice. Uh, they're loaded in via a card slot and that card utilizes uh, NFC chips. NFC chips are near field communication. It's that thing that we use when we use our phones to tap to pay, or when you have like a secure access card that gets you into the door where Sam Altman keeps the thing that Ilya saw. Now as to why they're using an NFC chip as opposed to a SD card, I am I, I have no idea. I mean, I know for a fact that whoever built this thing is way smarter than I am. So uh, there is definitely a reason for it. If, if you have any speculation on that, please let me know down in the comments. The camera does feature interchangeable lenses and actually has a pretty handsome matte box. Uh, I don't know what kind of lenses those are using. I mean, they certainly look like you know, standard 16 millimeter film lenses. Uh, that said, I can't actually make out any details on them. So I don't know if it's like a proprietary mount or not. Here's another shot of the lens. I actually really don't recognize it. Uh, I can make out like retro something or another right there. So yeah, if you know what lens this is or, you know, identify any kind of mount, please let me know in the comments as well. That said, given the primary function of the camera one is to, you know, obviously capture video and then do an AI video stylization pass on it. I'm not sure exactly what benefit there would be to using, you know, your vintage glass lenses, other than the fact that, you know, everything looks better when you have vintage glass. By the way, that is totally not true. I've bought tons of like cheap vintage lenses that have character that were actually just total trash. Speaking of, you know, kind of vintage analog, it also has this rotary knob where you can adjust the level of AI stylization that is going to be applied to your footage. Ultimately, of course, the question really comes down to how does the footage look? And well, you know, actually not too bad. I mean, it, really does have that kind of like stable diffusion video to video look. Uh, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies and morphing happening with the characters in the foreground. I actually think the backgrounds look really cool and stylized. 
But, you know, for example, our guy here doing a backflip, like as he goes, he kind of quick changes into a tuxedo. I mean, that is a Vegas worthy magic trick. Uh, the resolution is at 1368 by 768 at 12 frames a second, which I know is going to be disappointing to a lot of you. And at least in this first version, it's not actually processing the footage on device, but rather is, you know, kicking up to a cloud server, doing the video to video processing there, and then shooting it back down to the camera. So this is not actually happening in real time. Again, this is just for the prototype first version. And look, I can hear like half of you screaming at the screen right now, like that's not industry standard, that's not professional quality. And you know, yes, but this is footage shot on a Cine Kodak Special 2 using Kodak XX uh, film stock. And you know what, this is not professional quality either. This is, you know, 12 frames a second. It's super grainy, but you know what? It is also super cool. I mean, it is kind of crazy that when I see a shot like this, I'm actually not sure anymore if this was shot on film or whether like a shot like this was AI generated. Ultimately, I'm sure that the question that you have about the camera model one is like, you know, why build this thing? Like, why does it exist? Well, according to Aaron Duffy, the founder of Special Guest X, sometimes to imagine what the future might look like, you have to prototype it. This is especially the case when it comes to filmmaking, creative technologies, and the creative community. The CMR M1 or Camera One is a prototype for how hands-on creators will be able to use AI rather than sitting at a keyboard. Solid facts, but I actually use a standing desk, Aaron. So is this the future of cinema cameras? I mean, probably not this camera, but I do think it shows a lot of uh, potential applications that might come out of the idea. For example, you know, like relighting a scene in camera, or at least for reference, or, you know, <laughs> automatically removing a mustache from Henry Cavill's face. Believe me, no one enjoyed that job. And again, while this initial prototype is not meant for commercial purposes, it is part of Special Guest X's research to create physical interfaces for generative AI. We're gonna take a look at their other physical interface in just a second, but to note, uh, the camera's design has been developed to allow for further production to be scaled for a commercial model. So potentially we may actually see this you know, available for purchase at some point in the future. And again, this isn't their first foray into physical AI hardware. Uh, last year, they also made the first AI machine, a physical AI video creation and editing workstation. I mean, this thing was pretty crazy. It was essentially a hardware device that would allow you to, you know, generate storyboards or images you know, as they're doing here in sort of section one. Uh, you could lay out six, you know, individual frames or shots, uh, from there you would take it over into slot two with the rotary dial where you could you know, choose essentially your stylization pass on it. And then in the third section, choose a genre of music. Uh, you hit render and then it starts processing within a few moments. Well, I, I don't know if this probably isn't running in real time. Um, yeah, it would generate a, an AI video for you. And to top it off, obviously in section four, there was a speaker. So this is truly is a standalone unit. Uh, the whole thing was actually powered by Runway's Gen 2 as well. Again, weird, yes. Cool, also yes. Useful, eh, probably not, but do I want one? Yes. At the end of the day, I would be remiss if I did not mention that, you know, is there a pretty good likelihood that the camera model one will go the way of the Rabbit R1 and the Humane pin? I mean, possibly. With both of those devices, and in particular the Rabbit R1, which was viciously ripped apart by uh, Marcus Brownlee, um, there isn't much you can do on them that you can't do on your phone. And even today, there are those like crazy rigs in which you can put your cine style lenses onto uh, like an iPhone. I mean, I can't because I can't afford a cine style lens, but maybe you can. So is the camera model one doomed to the same fate? Well, you know, I don't know, but I applaud the fact that they made it just for the sheer zaniness of it. And listen, at the end of the day, even if nothing else happens with this, uh, they've at least got an argument to become a footnote in the history of cinema. And I mean, that, that's noteworthy of itself. So let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.